Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for coming today. I'd like to start off by asking Reverend Jack Swanson to please come up for the invocation. Please stand if you can. As a uh, history teacher, I'm always struck by the eerie similarities between the First World War and Vietnam. Both of them were fought for rather ill-defined political aims. Both of them ended in an armistice. Both of them devolved into the same type of terrible trench warfare at the end. Both of them had roughly the same amount of casualties, 53,000 uh, for uh, Vietnam, 58,000 for World War I. Uh, the World War I veteran came home to a ticket tape parade. 20 years later, he was shot at by his own government on the Mall in Washington. Vietnam veteran returned uh, to derision and being ignored by his country. 20 years later, he got his wall, or they got their wall uh, on the mall. At the military, military cemeteries in Europe where Americans and uh, French British troops are buried together, at the end of each day, two anthems are played. The French or British Army Band will play taps in honor of our country, and the Marine or Army Band will play the last post a European air. Today we're honored to be having uh, Tristan Andre and our own Bob LaFleur will be doing both today. Let's uh, pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for our wonderful country. We thank you for our flag. Lord, we honor all those who have had the honor to wear her uniform. We especially remember today all those who died in her service. Bless our proceedings today. Thank you for all of our veterans. And today we specifically honor our Vietnam veterans. Bless these proceedings. Respecting all faiths, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Norton to uh, come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then followed by the National Anthem by Sergeant Pat Flaherty. Please can remain standing. I pledge, allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars throw the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming that the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air, yea, proved through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner it wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Good afternoon. Please be seated. Thank you all for being here today at the ceremony for Vietnam War Veterans Day. My name is Christine Cugini, and I have the honor of being the Director of Veterans Services for the City of Quincy. I'd like to first begin with a heartfelt welcome home and thank you for your service to you, our Vietnam veterans. Your presence here today is a testament of your strength, resilience, and unwavering commitment to our country. We honor your service and we thank you for your sacrifice. We owe a debt of gratitude to you 
and these brave men, these heroes who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Their names are engraved on this clock tower and their sacrifice will never be forgotten. It is up to all of us to continue to remember and honor our veterans today, tomorrow, and always. I'd like to ask Mr. Tom Belinda, a veteran, a dear friend, to the podium to begin today's ceremony. Thank you. Welcome to the 37th consecutive Vietnam Veterans Day here in Quincy. It all started when this beautiful monument memorial was dedicated in 1987. Christine, I want to thank you for all you have done for us, um, all you have done for the guys that I send to you, because you help us. Christine's attending a class as we speak through an earphone, and now she has to leave. So thanks, Christine. Like all veterans here, to please raise your hand. All Vietnam veterans raise both hands. <laughs> Welcome home, brothers. Thank you. <clears throat> as, as you may know, uh, Mikey Norton, who led us in the Pledge of Allegiance, is Larry Norton's uh, grandson. And on the 29th, a couple of hardy of us Marines and, of course, Christine, Maybe there was an army guy or two, I'm not sure. Came out here on the 29th, and it reminded us why we switched to April, because it was raining and the wind was blowing about 40, and it was cold. That day, after, the, after we uh, read the names here and said a prayer, Mike Norton, Larry's son, and I went to Mount Wallace Cemetery and put Marine Corps flags on Larry's grave and the grave of Kevin Givens my dear friends, both. But without them, we wouldn't be here today, too, because they were instrumental in this service. It is my honor to introduce to you the mayor of Quincy. Tom Koch has been one of our biggest supporters. Whatever we needed, he would supply it, and he's always here. The Honorable Mayor Thomas P. Koch, mayor of the city of Quincy. Dog moves just like Tom does. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tom Melinda, Lieutenant. I've never felt safer. I was standing between the two Curry boys, two great Marines. Uh, certainly a uh, pleasure and honor for me to join you again today. And it's not so much what is said here. Uh, it really is your presence. That is the greatest gift we can give, the honor and memory of these gentlemen on the wall. And Tom alluded to that this was one of the first Vietnam monuments around, built back in 1987, built privately by Peter and Billy O'Connell. So we certainly want to thank them once again and for the maintenance of the clock tower going forward. Um, I just want to make a couple of announcements that uh, you might be interested in. So this coming August 9th, at the end of the boardwalk, we're going to be dedicating the Lone Sailor Statue. We're going to be honoring six admirals and we're gonna be honoring some five other notables from the Navy service. In addition, we'll be placing the bell from the USS Quincy, which used to be up on the, the green in front of City Hall, uh, and we'll be um, putting together a nice panel that will discuss the history of the site. Some of you don't know that we'll destroy us built during World War II at this location, and then World War II, we had a Naval Air Station here. Um, so August 9th uh, will be that ceremony, and. Uh, all are welcome. That date was picked because that is the date of the first USS Quincy being sunk at Savo Island in 1942. Um, second piece that I wanted to mention to you, in November, we're gonna be putting a new monument at Mount Wollaston. And that monument will be dedicated to folks that had served Desert Storm, Gulf War, Iraq, Afghanistan, the War on Terror. Uh, and there'll be seven, I think it's seven names inscribed on that monument that lost their lives in service to our country. We'll be doing that on uh, Saturday, November the 9th. Uh, both General Dunford and General McConville will co-chair uh, and MC the event. So we'll certainly have more to say about it in the coming days and weeks. 
but I really believe, and I'm sure the veterans here agree, it's their time to acknowledge their service uh, in some of these incredible battles and wars that this country continues to step up to do. So a couple of things that we'll be talking to you more about. Uh, just finally, let me just uh, say once again, thank you. Uh, I'm a son of a War II vet. I have a brother who was a Vietnam era vet, never went to Vietnam, but, but volunteered. He went into 17 at North Quincy High School, hoping to get into some action. He didn't get into action, but he learned his craft and served the city for many years. And, and I'm the blessed father of a, of a U.S. Marine who's now a firefighter, continuing to serve as so many veterans have done, including Tom Molina, coming home and going on to serve as a Quincy police officer. I, too, have fond memories of Larry. Uh, Larry was a unique, true character. If, if fiercely loyal, fiercely loyal. I know that in uh, his support over the years politically, but it was always about the names on this wall. Uh, and I'm grateful and to Larry's contributions all these years. And I know we did a bench for Larry and, and a bench for Tom uh, in recent years. So with that, may God continue to bless this great country. May God continue to bless those veterans who continue to serve. We had men and women from Quincy serving all across the globe. So keep them in your prayers tonight. God bless. Now my honor and sad duty to introduce the Gold Star families that are here with us today. I see them down the back down there. Mike Granahan, United States Army, and his wife, Karen. He's the brother of John Granahan, United States Marine Corps was killed in Vietnam. Bob Puglisi and Patty, who's the brother of David Puglisi, Puglisi, United States Army, was killed. And Patty Smith, the sister of Peter Jerry. I want to thank you all for always being here for us. Really, this is what it's all about here today. Thank you. Now, where are we at here? Next, going to introduce Andrew Colville. Andrew, if you wouldn't mind coming up here. <clears throat> Andrew is a United States Marine. He's the author of this book. Andrew's my friend. It's called The Summer of 2009. It's about his deployment to Afghanistan, his combat and so much more. He joined the Marine Corps with his buddy, Nick Ixaros. They're both Cape Cod boys, both Marines. But Nick was killed in Afghanistan. Andrew came home from Afghanistan to attend Nick's funeral. And then he had to return to Afghanistan to finish his deployment. That's the typical Marine Corps. I just, I'd like to read a passage from Andrew's book, if I could. It's okay with you, Andrew. <clears throat> to be safe, to be able to serve in a combat zone for the country as the United States Marine is the greatest honor I have ever had. We must always ensure, beyond all doubt, that the causes that we are willing to sacrifice American lives for are just, and there's no other alternative. Violence is an unfortunate reality of human nature. And it has been proven since the beginning of humanity, that there will always be wars. But that doesn't change the fact that every single life lost during the war means something. And that the cost of these lives is, <clears throat> is far greater than most people will ever realize. Andrew. I met Tom probably three years ago at a fundraiser on Cape Cod, and he invited me to come and attend this um, ceremony. It was right around the time of the withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2001, so probably about 
um, several months later. And I remember distinctly Tom got up here and one of the first things he said was he wanted to thank the Marines of the Globe, or the uh, veterans of the global war on terrorism of Iraq and Afghanistan for their contributions and what they did for their country. And he said something along the lines of, you should be proud of what you did. You kept us safe while we were at home. Tom doesn't know this, because I've never said it until now, but his statement delivering that in front of everybody and amongst Vietnam veterans and everybody else really inspired me to write that book. Um, it gave me the courage to dust off a journal I had kept when I was in Afghanistan in 2009 as a Marine with the 2nd Light Armor Reconnaissance Battalion. And I started reading through it and I realized there was a story I wanted to tell. And then I wrote the book, released it out into the world uh, with nothing more than the intention of giving other veterans the courage to maybe release their story into the world that they've been holding on to for a long time. Um, it's not a traditional memoir of war. It's really about the human experience of loss with the backdrop being Afghanistan. Um, you could replace Afghanistan with any war that's happened in the, the uh, history of the United States. Um, I really appreciate your kind words, Tom, and I appreciate you all having me here. And um, if anybody wants to check out the book, it's available on Amazon. I'm going to be at the uh, lunch after this. I have a few with me, probably not enough, but I'll be there if anybody has any questions. So I really appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Andrew was awarded the Navy and Marine Corps Medal with V for Valor in Afghanistan in action. Andrew is now a Yarmouth police officer, so it's a great thing. And with his permission, and uh, at my insistence, he brought some books with him, like he said, so I'm hoping you'll purchase a autographed copy. It's worth the read, it really is. Thank you again, Andrew. I will now ask Andrew and Marine Jerry Nickel to place the wreath. Please stand, attention. Now I'm going to ask Joe Murphy, combat marine, machine gunner, and Terrence Kelly, combat marine, first forward of artillery group, to come and read the names. E. Allen Bruno, George A. Levesque, James H. Kavicki, David A. Pitts, Lawrence E. Cyrus, Peter J. Kerry, James N. Barry, Martin R. Keith, James J. Jenks, Jr., Richard S. Davis, Jr., James N. Walsh, David O. Sullivan, Ralph J. Willard, Peter J. Landry, Brian P. Ahern, James C. Daigle, Basil L. Siriello, John H. Morgan, Leo F. Grady, Richard J. Vescancellos, Lawrence A. Grenham, Raymond J. West, James E. Cassell, and Gerald R. Peterson. Walter Fabio. Walter Fabio, Jr. David J. Pugrisi, Thomas Ciminello, Robert J. Fay, James A. Stock, James F. Murray, Gary J. Webb, Paul V. Grasso, Ralph W. Caspol, Charles L. Bifocally, Alfred V. Schofield, David F. G. Mega, Richard C. Archer, George F. Fell, Jr., Francois J. Bollier, Richard D. Walsh, Richard D. Slack, Jr., James P. Hickey, Joseph M. Pignato, Joseph P. Coughlin, that's John P. Coughlin, Warren C. Diamond, 
George W. Underwood, George A. Nash, Christopher C. Donahue, John W. Grenahan, Robert P. Phillips, missing in action. Mr. LaFleur. First, we're going to start with the last post. I'd like to thank Chief Mark Kennedy and the Quincy Police Honor Guard, Master Sergeant De, De Lorenzo, and the North Quincy High School, or the Quincy High School Honor Guard, for being with us here today. That concludes our ceremony. It's a brief one this year. Hope you'll join us at the 305 for some refreshments afterwards and talk to Andrew and to each other. And thank you for being here because as long as we remember them, they're never forgotten. Thanks again. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.